hello, friends of the ILCL blog. Uh, my name is Mariana Velasco Rivera. I'm co-editor of the blog, uh, and I am very happy to be joined in conversation by Professor Adrian Stone uh, and Professor Lulu Weiss uh, to talk about the recent launch of uh, the new journal, Comparative Constitutional Studies. Adrian Stone is a Melbourne Laureate Professor and Director of the Center for Comparative Constitutional Studies at Melbourne Law School. She researches um, in the areas of constitutional law and constitutional th theory, freedom of expression and academic freedom. Among her recent works are the Oxford Handbook on Australian Constitution, uh, co-edited co with Cheryl Saunders, uh, the Oxford Handbook on Freedom, uh, freedom of Speech, um, co-edited with uh, Frederick uh, Schaar, um, and Open Minds, Academic Freedom and Freedom of Speech, um, co-authored by uh, with Caroline Evans. With Lulu Weiss, uh, she is a foundation editor of Comparative Constitutional Studies. Um, Adrian is also the immediate past president of the International Associate, Association of Constitutional Law and former vice president of the Australian Association of Constitutional Law and elected um, fellow of the Ac Academy of Social Sciences in Australia and the Australian Academy of Law. Lulu Weiss um, is an associate professor uh, at Melbourne Law School. Her, her research uses philosophical and comparative methods uh, to analyze issues in constitutional theory, including legislation as a source of constitutional meaning, the significance of amendment for constitutional interpretation, and understanding constitutional uh, duties, uh, such as uh, directive principles. Her current research uh, projects um, explore principles of green non-anthropocentric constitutionalism and how courts reason about limitations on rights. Lulu holds a PhD in philosophy from Stanford University and a JD from Stanford Law School. She is a founder um, um, a, and co-convener of Melbourne, of Melbourne Law School's Legal Theory Workshop. So thank you so much uh, to you both, uh, Adrian and Lulu, uh, for joining us. Um, so let's just um, dive into, into the interview. So, or this conversation. So, um, Lulu, uh, how did you come about the idea and determination uh, to start the journal? Well, first, thank you so much for the invitation to have a conversation about the journal. We're both um, so excited about it. It's actually, you know, something we've been talking and thinking about for a really long time. I think just seeing, you know, the huge appetite in the last few decades for um, doing comparative work kind of broadly conceived in constitutional law. So whether that's looking at multiple jurisdictions or doing work that's really kind of speaking to a broader um, global audience. And, you know, given that appetite and kind of, you know, having not a huge amount of places, um, international journals, specialty journals to publish in, we had been kind of you know, thinking about it and people kind of been asking us too. They're like, you know, uh, the, the center is such a kind of, you know, locus for this type of research. And, you know, it'd be great if you guys had a journal. And so we've been talking about it and, um, but it just, it felt like a lot of work, <laughs> frankly. <laughs> and it turns out it, it is a lot of work, but, um, you know, it's a labor of love. And we had many conversations over several years in this nice little coffee shop in Melbourne, talking about the ideas for this journal. And then finally, um, it was really in 2020 when um, we were kind of both of us feeling a bit too burned out to get much research and writing done. They thought, let's put let's put a proposal together and, and see what happens. And here we are. Okay. Can I um, just jump in and say, first of all, that it's so nice to be on the IACL blog because, as you kindly mentioned, I was the president of the IACL and so I've seen this blog grow from its inception, so it's wonderful um, to see it, it going on and on. Um, but secondly, I just wanted to jump in and say we the, the, the logo for our or the cover of our journal is a black swan and we can talk about that later, but I often think that if it hadn't been a black swan, it would have had to be a cup of coffee because we spent a lot, a lot of time talking about this journal and drinking coffee. And we were really reflecting on the great growth in the field. And there's so much appetite for publication and we could see other outlets were absolutely saturated, really high quality outlets that were just overwhelmed with really high quality work. And because we both work at the Centre for Comparative Constitutional Studies in Melbourne, uh, we were often asked, 
would we be interested in starting a journal? And I'm just so grateful to Lulu that she was the one that was prepared to have coffee with me and chat it over and eventually make it a reality. And it's been a joy to see it come to life. That's very, that's, that's, yeah, that's great to hear like how coll collaborative work uh, comes about. Uh, do you want to tell us about a little bit about the logo? Just that since you mentioned it. Oh, I'd love to. So, well, it really comes down to what our ambitions are uh, for the journal. And one of the things that we felt was that there was a place in a journal to do, um, we would like our journal to do something in the field that wasn't being done enough. So we really wanted to have a journal that would bring more attention to less studied regions and jurisdictions and more attention to approaches that are outside the empirical social sciences, although, of course, we want to cover those as well. Uh, but we're really especially interested in um, interpretive approaches to comparative constitutional law and, and as well as approaches that were driven by the humanities. So we did a little bit think about ourselves as trying to push something new and we were very much attracted to the black swan as a um, icon for our cover because it's, a, I guess, a little bit of a nod to our Antipodean origins down here at the University of Melbourne. Um, and as I think everyone will know, the black swan is native to Australia, but it also has philosophically become a symbol for upending assumptions um, and particularly Eurocentric assumptions. So it's a little bit of a cheeky nod to our ambitions in that regard. Uh, that's that's very interesting. Actually, I think that is uh, related to my second question. And I, uh, I would like to hear more uh, like you building on, on that. Like the, the, the second question is like, what actually do you hope to bring to the table with this, with this journal? And, and I think you already suggested, suggested you know, uh, what you're looking for. Uh, but if you have anything, any of you have anything to add to that? Uh, well, I think Lulu perhaps could speak to this as well, but um, we, were, we did want to do something um, original in terms of coverage, but we also really wanted a journal that would focus on the author experience. Mm -hmm. And I know that Lulu has things about this that she probably wants to say. Yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, this is something, and this also, I think, like, reflects the way that we do work at the Centre at Melbourne as well, but we've always, you know, focused on really um, deep engagement with ideas, and so we wanted, you know, ideally, and, you know, it's a good question whether, you know, going forward, like, you know, the, the practices that we're going to put in place to um, sustain this is a kind of an ongoing conversation, but, we wanted to, as far as possible, facilitate kind of deep engagement um, with um, the, you know, submissions that we're getting. Um, and that's, I think, reflected, you know, in our first, um, our first two special issues, which, you know, we workshopped fully, had multiple commentators on each of the papers, in addition to sending out for um, peer review. Um, so all of the pieces have gone through kind of multiple kind of layers of feedback, which, you know, we think then like reflects both in the quality of the piece, but also just kind of, you know, supporting kind of the authors and their kind of their broader research um, agendas and objectives and helping them kind of develop their work and really kind of give their ideas the best possible um, presentation that they can have. I know Lulu and I are great believers in slow scholarship. And so we want to encourage people who aim to publish with the journal to take their time to really do it well. If we provide reports and feedback, we really want them to be taken into account, you know, so that you can really make the piece the best it can be rather than just sort of try to just clear a hurdle. That's the ambition we have for it in any event. And so it's been really fun organising these first two issues, um, mm -hmm. which have been both um, have been by invitation and they've been structured by really in-depth workshops. We are, of course, open now for general submissions and we've been receiving some fabulous work and we encourage uh, general submissions. And going forward, we will be publishing a mix of special issues and um, uh, general issues. And But we hope that the various structures that we'll put in place through the reviewing process and through a workshopping process for special issues means that we'll have really great, deep, serious engagement that will produce fabulous scholarship. And we're, we're so excited by what's appearing in the journal so far. That is really great to, to hear. And 
based based on your on your goals and like the fact that you know like you're starting this like you already have two the first two issues out um but i imagine that there are challenges uh you like unique challenges to you know new journals and i guess also unique challenges to a journal that is looking to you know sort of like differentiate itself from you know like bring something new um so i would like to hear um about what you are expecting what are the challenges that you are already facing or expecting to to face um in this endeavor yeah absolutely i mean you know given the kind of intellectual ambition that we have for the journal and you know especially kind of the the breadth of coverage where you know, as Adrian mentioned, um, you know, in addition to wanting to cover a range of approaches that um, maybe have not been as front and center in other um, leading publications um, in recent years. So, you know, encouraging more focus on historical approaches, discursive approaches, um, philosophical approaches. Um, you know, we're hoping to include, of course, um, and we have indeed in um, the special issue contents um, approaches that use empirical social sciences, but trying to kind of have a more of a mix of um, different approaches, mm -hmm. um, which requires, you know, trying to attract kind of potentially a different set of scholars that might not otherwise um, publish in a specialty um, journal of this kind. Um, and then in addition to that, you know, the ambition of covering a um, set of jurisdictions that tend to be less um, studies, including ones, especially in, in our region, and, you know, a lot of the challenges that we run up against there are it's kind of, you know, a species of kind of the generic kind of structural challenges that create barriers to entry, um, particularly from scholars in, you know, jurisdictions in the global south, um, other places where um, people have, you know, there are a range of kind of difficulties, both in terms of um, resources and other kind of sets of obligations um, as scholars. And, yeah, it's it's a huge challenge, and we're you know having kind of an ongoing dialogue with um, members of our editorial board about you know, what are the best ways to kind of facilitate that and try to um, encourage that kind of scholarship. And we do hope that you know some of the 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 things that we we're talking about before in terms of kind of author experience and emphasizing kind of slow scholarship trying to give as much um, feedback um, as we can to authors to help them make their work better will encourage that as well. But it is, it's a significant challenge and it's just, you know, basically it requires hard work and there's kind of no way around the hard work of it. Yeah. I have to say, it, it, oh, it's really fun doing something really ambitious. We didn't want to just put out another journal that just pumped out articles. We really wanted to have an ambitious journal and we're really lucky to be doing it in a place that is very globally focused. You know, in Melbourne here, we're in the heart of the geographic south, not the global south, but the geographic south. And we've both been lucky to be connected in various ways to scholars globally. So we have a really global focus. I encourage everyone who's who's um, uh, watching this to consider the journal um, we're interested in all parts of the world. We're interested in diverse forms of scholarship and we're interested in places and approaches that might not be published in other places as well. So when, you, when you're ambitious, yeah, sure, there are challenges in making it work. I'm really lucky to be working with Lulu and I think we're both kind of a combination of determined and yet we, we appreciate that we'll have to approach our ambitious goal a little bit slowly and we won't always be able to get everything we want, but we're going to keep pushing to get a, what we think will be a great, fabulous project product. Yeah, it's very refreshing to 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 hear. I have to say, um, so um, I am, and I'm sure um, our our uh, audience uh, will be delighted to hear as well. Um, um, so yeah, so um. I, so you already mentioned that like the first two issues are um, already out and like they were, you know, like fully workshopped. Uh, so would you um, mind telling uh, us a little bit about um, those two issues? Um... Absolutely. So we decided to start with two really fundamental issues, one being constitutional identity and the other one being constitutional methodology. So two of the really key kind of core ideas in our field. 
and to devote a special issue to each of them. And the first one I might speak to and then hand over to Lulu since I took the lead with um, Professor Stan Smet from uh, Hasselt University in um, Belgium. I took the lead on the first one. Um, and it's on constitutional identities, it, which of course is a question that goes to really the nature of constitutionalism or the nature of constitutionalisms. So if you want to actually see um, the uh, journal, I just just to have a little ad break here. It's available open access until the end of the year on the Edward Elgar uh, website. But um, you can see um, some a really great set of articles. And what we've sought to do is to, you know, combine some really senior and well-established voices in the in the field, um, like Gary Jacobson, with some real up and coming stars of the academy we're really delighted to have a contribution on on african constitutionalism from Barry Hun Gabay on Ch on china's socialist constitutional identity from Noxon Bui um a wonderful comparative piece on israel and kenya from Yaniv Rosnai and Duncan Okubasu there are contributions that go to australia and um, the Nordic EU state members, and of course, the construction of constitutional identity by the Indian states from Apanachandra. They're, they're a really exciting set of papers. Um, and they set us off really with a kind of global and diverse look at the idea of constitutionalism. And that's a sort of foundation of the field. So that's where we wanted to start. Lulu might speak to the second one. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, and we, you know, I should say too that both of them, you know, we fit them under kind of a common theme of constitutional isms in the plural, um, which was meant to really capture um, the diversity of kind of both experience and kind of approaches to constitutional law scholarship. Um, yeah, so the methodologies, methodologies um, special issue um, also kind of tackles a range of kind of, I guess, the idea here is the, the question of kind of how we do our work as um, constitutional law scholars um, with a comparative focus, um, again, whether that's doing, you know, multiple jurisdiction studies or writing in a way that's speaking to a global audience has, you know, come under kind of increasing scrutiny um, in, in recent years, you know, a lot of that, you know, very much prompted by um, the important work of Rand um, Herschel. Um, also something that has always, I think, been at the heart of our conversations at the Center for Comparative Constitutional Studies in Melbourne and the various kind of fora that we have that discuss kind of the challenges of doing comparative work. So, here we wanted um, to, you know, think about some, you know, include some of the approaches that um, perhaps are less well considered. I think there's been a lot of work done on um, empirical, empirically oriented, social scientific um, approaches to um, comparative constitutional law. And so we wanted to highlight um, a range of other um, approaches. So for example, we have a contribution from our colleague, um, Will Partlett, who's a trained historian. Um, history is something that's widely used in uh, constitutional law, not just by scholars, but of course also by um, judges, um, among other legal actors. And you know, thinking about that from you know the lens of someone who's trained as a historian, how to be a good consumer and user of um, histor historical materials. Um, you know, we did also include um, a, a chapter from Tanya, or a chapter, an article from Tanya Jacoby. Um, on empirical approaches um, and really kind of approaching that from in a way that we hope kind of diffuses some of the usual kind of antagonism kind of per, uh, uh, for and against those kinds of approaches um, by really kind of speaking to um, both, I think both to people who are empirically trained but also to people who are not about how to understand that kind of work. And mm -hmm with an emphasis on how it's complementary to um, other types of approaches, especially kind of the more kind of contextually um, oriented um, approaches as, as well. So the range of other um, articles that are included in there, we have one, a great one from Philip Dan that's on um, global South approaches mm -hmm. to comparative constitutional law. Um, 
and um, a contribution from David Dyson House and Tom Poole that looks at um, philosophical approaches and um, a really lively piece from Aileen Kavanaugh on kind of theory, theory and practice, um, which again kind of picks up another sort of central um, set of debates um, in comparative constitutional law. So yeah, so plenty, plenty to um, look at there and um, yeah, I know it's, it should be, I think it's coming out this month. Is that right, Adrian? Oh, okay. yeah, it will be out this month. And a small In full, yeah. yeah. A bunch of those articles are already um, ready as advanced um, oh, articles. Good. And if you can... on the Edward Elder website, you can see some of them are already there. And I should just add, there's a really, I think, sharp and interesting exchange between Martin Laughlin and Tunis Rue. Um, about comparative constitutional studies that I think will neatly um, uh, introduce many readers to some important debates in the field. That sounds very, very exciting. Is the second issue going to be open access as well or just the... the, the yeah, both. So these are both um, issue one, so volume one and volume two, and they're, um, yeah, oh, they're okay. both access. Yeah, yeah. So 1.1 1 .1 and 1 1.2. Oh, okay, okay, 1.1. 1 .1. Okay, perfect. Um, yeah, I might have got that backwards. I can't remember if it's like issue, volume, volume, issue. Yeah. <laughs> I should not be a librarian. So they are open access till the end of the year. And can I say we're already well underway for um, a general issue from general submissions next year. But um, there, there is uh, potentially some room if people are interested in submitting soon, and there, there certainly is room in um, a journal in an issue for twenty twenty five as well. Okay, so please keep us keep us uh, posted so that we can also publicize this um, on the blog. I'm sure our readership um, will be very interested uh, in this. So um, that sounds uh, really great. I'm really excited for this um, very important project. I am sure that comparative constitutional studies will become one of the leading journals uh, in the field. Have no doubt about it. Um, we at the blog are delighted to see you both uh, leading this very, very important project. And once again, uh, thank you so much uh, for joining us. Um, and to our audience for watching and their continued interest um, in the blog. Um, goodbye and see you next time. Thank you. Thanks, Mariana. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.